I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I'm not. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your host, Simon. I'm here. One of my writers, in this case, Kevin, writes me a script. Thank you, Kevin. I'm going to read it. I've never read it before. That's the format of the show. Let's get into it. This is me talking very quickly so we can get into it quickly. Let's go. I've made this point in various other videos, but if something is possible, then somebody is going to do it. It doesn't matter how stupid or pointless an idea is. Somebody will always do it just to say that they could. Back when I was an engineering student in Miami, things like this happened all the time. Was there any reason for me and my friends to test what would happen if we inserted a 10,000 microfarad capacitor directly into an electrical outlet? Of course not. We already knew it was a stupid and dangerous idea, which is why the capacitor was taped to a long PVC pipe so we could stand far away. But we did it anyway because, well, why the hell not? The other day, I thought I'd found the plug, the charger for my shaver. So I was like, I had this like old beard trimmer that I just, I, I can't, I needed it for some reason. I got like a new one since then, but I was like, okay, cool. I need to charge this old bad boy up. And I went through digging through all of my piles of cables and I found the cable. I'm like, oh, great, this is the cable. It's a little bit stiff, but that's the right one, or at least it's the same type. So I plug it in and I go and plug it into the socket of the kitchen. It just boom, like <laughs> fully explodes and there's a big spark and the plugs all melted and and I'm like, whoa, boy. <laughs> okay, it wasn't the right cable, I guess. And all the power goes out, so I have to go outside, turn the power back on. We sought to answer pointless questions like these all the time. How powerful could we make this potato gun? Was this actually flammable? Would anybody notice if the carpet from the lobby of the business school suddenly disappeared and was carpeting our apartment instead? None of these things really needed to be answered, but our scientific curiosity got the better of us. This curiosity extends well beyond dumb our students, and actual professionals spend a significant amount of time and resources sources researching idea i realized i did read the title so i have no idea what this is about <laughs> normally i read the title at the beginning of the episode but i was so keen to just jump in that i was like i, I literally don't know remember no rush uh researchers trying i like, trying to create things that there really wasn't any reason to bother with in the first place mcdonald's loses the plot back into our store i don't know what it's about <laughs> Back in 2014, McDonald's was faced with a serious problem. Parents wanted to know what the company was doing to make their kids eat healthier. What are you talking about? It's McDonald's. <laughs> hey, McDonald's, what are you doing to make my kid eat healthier? It's like, hey, Nazis, what are you doing to help out the Jews, though? <laughs> it's like, it's not the question that you ask. Not that. I'm not trying to correlate McDonald's with Nazism or anything like that. Of course not. I'm just kind of saying, like, McDonald's isn't where you go to eat healthy, is it? Just before we continue with today's video, I want to say thank you to Sheath for sponsoring it. Sheath underwear called Sheath because they put your penis in a sheath. I don't actually know if that's true. It's just the assumption I've always made with sheath underwear because you like sheath a sword. A sword goes in a sheath, right? And with sheath underwear, your penis goes in a sheath. I think that's correct. If I'm wrong, I apologize, Sheath. So what are Sheath? Well, they are simply the most comfortable boxer briefs you'll ever wear. Look, maybe you think briefs are too tight. That is absolutely me. I don't need that tightness. Or uh, boxes are too loose. You have to be moving around. you got to readjust. And that's not brilliant. Sheath are the best of both worlds. They are, like I said, they're just the most comfortable you'll ever wear. They have these compartments as well, which is particularly nice in summer. Your man pieces go into separate places. So everything is nicely arranged. There's no adjusting yourself, but it just doesn't feel weird and tight and give you the, the kind of wedgy situation that you get with briefs, at least for me. I just don't like them. What I'd recommend with sheath is you buy a pair, and because you might be like, that's a bit weird. <laughs> what are you talking about, Simon? Buy a pair, try it out, and then just like me, your underwear drawer will only be sheath afterwards. It's all you'll ever wear. The fabric is stretchy, it's moisture wicking, which means you stay cool and comfortable all day long. And the best part, got those pouches to keep everything separated. So what are you waiting for? Go to sheathunderwear.com right now. Treat yourself to the comfiest pair of underwear you'll ever own. Plus, a little something extra for you. Use the promo code BLAZE and you get a fantastic 20% off your order, which is a great deal. Link below. And now back to today's video. Thank you, Sheath. It's a strange question to ask of a restaurant whose entire business model is to hand you a burger and fries within 90 seconds of you walking in the door, but it's a question that parents insisted asking on anyway. Parents, get your shit together. I'm a parent. Don't ask this question. It's McDonald's. If you don't want your kid to eat something unhealthy, don't get it from McDonald's, okay, big brain? Try and get a few more wrinkles in there, okay? Just a few more wrinkles in your brain and it'll do you a lot of good. If they were really that concerned with making their kid eat healthier, they'd probably stop buying them fast food in the first place. 
fucking preach, Kevin. There's no need to try and force a company to change the way they've successfully done business for the past 60 years to accommodate your laziness instead of just handing your kid an apple or a piece of celery with peanut butter on it if you want them to have a healthy snack. Apple with peanut butter? Kevin, no. Yes. Then again, consumer laziness is the foundation of the entire fast food industry, so McDonald's was happy to try and oblige the request. I mean, they'll do it if they can make money off it. There is healthy shit at McDonald's. Like, you get a Happy Meal, and it's like, do you want fries or salad? And I'm always like, fries. Because I don't want to eat my kids' leftover salad. <laughs> they already offered some healthier menu items like salads and parfait, but the specific target of this request was the iconic Happy Meal. It's honestly a bit strange that the Happy Meal was coming under fire from parents in 2014, as only a few years earlier they had cut the kids' portion of fries in half and replaced it with carrots or apple slices. Yes, that's it. It's not a salad, it's apple slices. If parents wanted, they could even nix the fries altogether and just get a double serving of fruit or veggies. Oh, we don't get both. You have to choose, like, the little small baby package of fries or the, the salad. I always get the ah, I don't always get the fries. One kid gets fries, one kid gets salad, and then they share, and I'll eat the leftover fries. You could already get a juice box or a low-fat milk instead of a soda as the drink for the meal as well. So I don't I don't think you can I don't even think you can choose soda for Happy Meals here. It's you get you could choose a milkshake, you could choose orange or apple juice, I think. I don't think you could choose a Coke because it's milk for kids. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell else parents were expecting from a burger restaurant, and I don't know the McDonald's knew either, so they just sent their chefs and food scientists off with one vague instruction, force children to eat their vegetables. When the end result of their madness rolled out of the McDonald's test kitchen, it was a diabolical concoction so insane that I'd have thought it was forged in the fires of hell by Lucifer himself. I have no idea what we're talking about. What is this? Bubblegum flavored broccoli? No! What the f How does that even exist? Have you genetically engineered this? It's an abomination! I couldn't begin to tell you what goes into making broccoli taste like bubblegum, but I can tell you that the second kids tried it for the first time, McDonald's knew that the experiment was over. While they succeeded in making broccoli that had a sweet, candy-like taste, it went over worse than plain broccoli would have. Not only did kids think that it was still gross, possibly grosser than regular broccoli, it was also confusing. Kids may not want to eat their vegetables, but they know what to expect from them when they try. Sight and perception are a large factor in how things taste, so it can be a bit of a jarring experience when something doesn't taste like what it should. Even without seeing it, our brain's expectations can alter how something tastes to us. It's a phenomenon you've probably experienced before. Many times you grab a drink and sip it, thinking it's soda, only to discover that it was actually coffee. But it <laughs> That's not something that usually I struggle with, because coffee's served in a cup and soda is served in a glass. Normally I'll pick something up expecting it to be like sweet or savory or something, and then it's like, oh, or like you'll pick up a can of Coke and be like, oh, that is flat and horror. That's yesterday's Coke, isn't it? Ah. Oh. But at first, it doesn't taste like coffee. It actually tastes like really bad soda. Eventually, your brain figures out what's going on, and it starts to taste like what it is, but it's still really, really weird. Now imagine that same experience, except it's broccoli, and it tastes like fucking candy. Even if you've been told it should taste like candy, it still looks like broccoli, so that's what your brain is expecting. The whole thing creates a bizarre and unpleasant experience that we could all just do without. Can't you get used to it? Surely eventually you get used to it, and you're like, okay, so this is how broccoli tastes now. <laughs> Good. And also, if you make broccoli taste like candy, isn't that going to be like introducing a bunch of sugar to it, which is going to kind of take away the point of having broccoli? I don't know, but I hate it. We should probably let McDonald's food scientists get back to what they do best, rather than asking them to commit crimes against nature, because let's be real, their careers already peaked with the McGriddles. What the fuck is a McGriddle? McGriddle? I've never even heard of this. Reverse Tarzan. There are a lot of counts of humans being raised by animals, many of which are actually true. Really? In general, this is really bad for human development. When the child is only raised by animals for a year or two before being found, they can usually still learn everything that a person would be expected to, but spend too long isolated from humans and it's bad news. <laughs> this is no way. What did Kevin say? In general, this is really bad for human development. Uh, I think we can say no shit. <laughs> no shit on that one. Are you raised by wolves? Yes. It wasn't brilliant for my development. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! 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 
So-called feral children never learn to speak and suffer other developmental issues as language and communication are crucial at a young age to turn you into a functioning human being. In addition to never being able to learn to speak, feral children tend to exhibit behavior similar to the animals that they lived with. What a shocking surprise! This makes sense, because what else are they going to learn to do? In 1931, Dr. Winthrop Kellogg had a son named Donald. As a comparative psychologist who studied the intelligence of different animal species, this gave him a unique opportunity. He's going to do some psycho sh**. Disney. It's like I feel like being the the daughter or a son of a you know experimental psychologist. It's like oh, f dad or mum is going to be messing with me forever. It was already well known what would happen if a child was raised by animals. So what if he adopted a chimpanzee to raise alongside his own human son? On first blush, this isn't the craziest idea. Chimps are the closest living animals to humans, so maybe one could be raised to exist in human society. Yes, but they're just not as brainy as us. We've just got these giant wrinkly brains. It's why we're the dominant species, and chimps are chimps. We lock them in zoos. They live in the forest. We are their masters. <laughs> <laughs> The female chimp, Gua, was raised alongside Donald, and they were treated identically. At the start of the experiment, Donald was 10 months old and Gua was 7 months old. While admittedly it seems like an interesting idea, one has to begin to wonder what they expected to happen. Initially, Gua outperformed Donald in every way despite being 3 months younger. Shocking as this may be, it's not that shocking, because they, they have a shorter lifespan, right? So they're going to develop faster than us. The young ape was better at climbing than the human and had better reflexes. Doesn't, again, surprise me at all. Like, if someone was like, do you want to try racing a chimp? I'd be like, oh, you no, know, it's a chip. It'd be like, or climbing. They like, say, what? Are we, I've seen chips in the zoo. They're like climbing trees like nothing. They're swinging on vines, I assume. It's not something I can compete with. I could barely stand. She also quickly picked up many human abilities, feeding herself with a spoon and such things. However, eventually her progress plateaued and Donald outperformed her in tasks requiring critical thinking and reasoning skills. Again, psychologist, what did you hope to achieve with this? Because all of this so far, it just seems like extremely obvious. What could the monkey do better? Climb. What could the human do better? Critical reasoning. Oh, really? I wouldn't have thought that. Donald or whatever the f your name was. For example, both were taken to a mesh metal barrier with a gap above the floor and a treat was placed just beyond it. Both reached under the barrier and grabbed the treat with no problem, so then another was placed out of reach. There was a broom beside them, and while both Gua and Donald figured out that they could use the broom to get the food that was out of reach, Donald was able to do it faster and with greater accuracy. But more importantly, Gua never learned to speak. According to Kellogg, it was like she wasn't even trying. This really doesn't seem like it should have been a surprise. <laughs> exactly. Exactly! People have trained parrots and crows to speak, even if they don't understand what they're saying, but nobody has ever successfully trained an ape to speak before. And it wasn't for lack of trying, so this outcome should have been a foregone conclusion. While the entirety of the experiment is really interesting, if the only way that the experiment would be considered a success is Gua learned to speak, then Kellogg should really have realized from the start that this was a pointless endeavor. Is the whole experiment interesting, though? It more just seems to me that it discovered nothing other than exactly what we would expect. In fact, it was worse than pointless. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, was it interesting or was it worse than pointless? Nine months into the experiment, not only had Gua refused to speak, but so had Donald. The two siblings were really fond of one another and enjoyed playing together, but instead of emulating the speech of the humans running the experiment, Donald was instead copying the sounds that Gua made. <laughs> He was over a year and a half old at this point, and he still hadn't said his first word, so Kellogg decided to pull the plug on the whole operation before he accidentally turned his son into a feral child. Probably a good idea there, Doc. <laughs> mm. uh, do, you have to, do you have to do, like, ethical studies, ethical review boards, if you're experimenting on your own children? <laughs> Inquiring minds. Male turkeys have no standards. Male turkeys are entirely too horny. It was already known that male turkeys were trying to mate with a lifelike model of a female turkey. <laughs> I feel like, yeah. <laughs> I've heard of blow up dolls and sex dolls. Those are a thing. So do some humans. But researchers Martin Sheen and Edgar Hale, working out of the University of Pennsylvania, decided in 1965 to test just how anxious these male, tur male turkeys were to bone. They began by removing pieces of the model turkey to make it less lifelike. <laughs> They're just going to strip it down to nothing, aren't they? It's just going to be like the pole that was holding the turkey, and the, the, the male turkeys are still going to want to mate with that stupid pole. They could remove the wings, the tail, and the feet, and the male turkeys would still be more than happy to get it on with the models. Still not satisfied, the researchers removed the entire body, so that just a <laughs> So that the model was just a head on a stick, but the male turkeys were still down. 
<laughs> this is so pointless. I love it. I d this is what the title must be like. Pointless experiments, right? I don't even understand the mechanics of how a turkey would have sex with a head on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Those fucking turkeys figured it out though, didn't they? But this research is starting to sound like some really dark web shit. Eventually, the lifelike model head was removed and instead a turkey head made out of balsa wood. <laughs> fucking turkeys! What the f***? And the male turkeys immediately <laughs> took to pound town on it. <laughs> The only thing that the male turkeys didn't seem to care for was when they left the entire model turkey body intact, but with a head removed. <laughs> That's f***ed up. This is so f***ed up, scientists. I genuinely have no idea what point Sheen and Elle were trying to prove with this study, other than that turkeys really want sex. And no sex with headless model turkeys. That's fucking weird. Curious if they could replicate their results using other fowl. Another study using using leghorn chickens uh, was published under the title Effects of Morphological Variations of Chicken Models on Sexual Response of Cocks. <laughs> they put cocks in there rather than rooster on purpose, didn't they? Crows understand zero. Wait, Kevin, did they want it though? You don't enter it. I don't know what happened with the cocks. You just move on to the next entry. Do you? Did I miss something? You just tell me curious if they could replicate the results and you don't tell me the results. <laughs> what were the results? How horny are those white chickens? Please give me cock. Cock. Crows understand zero. Zero as a number is a complex thing. I could go on about it for way too long, but this isn't the channel for that. The important thing is that zero is essentially an abstract idea that took mathematicians what, to our modern mind, seems like an embarrassingly long time to figure out. <laughs> Stupid mathematicians. A bag could be referred to as empty or having nothing in it, but the idea that the empty bag contained zero apples was revolutionary. People had only been working with the counting numbers for millennia, and the introduction of this abstract number changed everything. And in 2021, a team working out of the Institute of Neurobiology at the University of Tübingen in Germany discovered that crows understood the concept just as well as humans do. The design of the experiment was pretty simple. Crows were shown two images containing a varying number of dots. They were trained to peck the glass in front of them if the pictures had the same number and to do nothing if they were different. The crows were able to answer correctly 75% of the time and mistakes were most common when the number of dots was very similar. For example, they might have mistakenly said that three and four were the same, but they were unlikely to confuse one and five. The second experiment was run using the same methodology, but this time they added in a blank screen as well. The results were the same, which is good, but the results with the blank screen were what most interested the team. The crows didn't seem to be just comparing a screen with something and a screen with nothing. They recognized zero as a number that came before one, evidenced by the fact that most errors involving zero were when it was compared to one. There were obligatory wires implanted into the birds' brains because that's just how science works, and they monitored how different neurons lit up when the crows were presented with different numbers. <laughs> I bet the crows laugh. Oh, I should have pretended I didn't know what zero was. Why do I always try to show off to the scientists? It always gets worse when I show off. The neural activity showed a clear presence of a number line in the crow's brain, with zero being located next to one. It's... This wasn't entirely unprecedented, as it had already been shown that both honeybees and various types of monkeys also understand the concept of zero as a number. What has yet to be shown is why the fuck we care. It's definitely a neat piece of information that you can use to entertain people at the world's most boring dinner party, but was it really necessary to stick wires into a crow's brain to find this out? This isn't just me being dismissive either. The researchers fully admitted that they have no idea what use, if any, this new discovery could possibly have. <laughs> Some guy dedicated his PhD and it's like, I don't know, it's just curious. <laughs> oh God. Thank you so much for wasting my mother time. The cure for what ails you. A group of scientists decided to ask the very important question, does semen have antidepressant properties? The original study was published in the Archive of Sexual Behavior, a peer-reviewed academic journal in the official publication of the International Academy of Sex Research. Originally published in 2002, the highly controversial research used hundreds of sexually active college girls as the subjects. They were all given the Beck Depression Inventory, a standard clinical test for measuring depression. Then they were asked questions regarding their sexual activity. The results showed a strong correlation between condom use and levels of depression, and suicidal thoughts were four times more prevalent among the girls who were routinely not being raw dogs. <laughs> Kevin, no. 
<laughs> oh, I never thought I'd say the word raw dogged in a script. <laughs> Researchers attempted to find other possibilities for the correlation, such as the frequency of sex, if they were in happy, committed relationships, and general personality differences between those women that didn't use condoms. But they couldn't find any factor that would explain the results other than the presence or the absence of semen. So, what could be going on here? When most people think of semen, they think of just the sperm, but that's only a small percent of it. Most of it is seminal plasma, which is full of chemicals that make people feel good, like oxytocin, cortisol, and serotonin, as well as melatonin, which helps regulate sleep. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, those women who weren't using condoms reportedly were sleeping better as well. The vaginal tissue is extremely absorbent, so it's really very possible that these chemicals are being introduced into the woman's system and causing her to feel good. The researchers also speculate that the same effect would likely be achieved by swallowing. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What the original study? Fuck. <laughs> 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 well, the, well, the original study contained about 300 subjects there. Oh, I got a little tear. The baby was so Okay. Okay, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I'm sure Sam cut that down to something reasonable. No. While the original study contained 300 subjects, their paper also mentioned a second study with an additional 700 subjects that supported the findings that was not yet published. However, these findings, I can't pay attention, were never published, nor were any of the follow-ups that might have been expected. Like I said, the research was highly controversial because it didn't address the most obvious follow-up question I'm getting there. Would an STD or unwanted pregnancy drastically increase depression? The answer is obviously yes, which kind of negates the entire purpose of the study. You can't tell girls to run around having unprotected sex to battle their depression if they're just going to have dire consequences that will make them even more depressed. Though it is an interesting question that possibly has some validity to it if it was better left unasked. Unfortunately, while this study is from 2002 and mentioned all the time, it doesn't seem like it ever was published. Anything was ever published on the topic. While the question shouldn't have been asked in the first place, now that it has, I'd like a definitive answer. The paper also indicated uh, that the antidepressive effects were temporary and that the longer a woman went without unprotected sex, the more depressed she became. The theory of a sort of psychological semen withdrawal <laughs> semen withdrawal so i was really looking forward to their follow-up paper <laughs> women come no yeah but i'm not reading that i'm not reading that but if you're looking for some more bizarre <laughs> oh my god i'm not but if you're looking for some more bizarre reading one of the co-authors of this paper went on to co-author at least six research papers examining the purpose of erect nipples in both men and women oh my god thank god that's where this video ends thanks for being here <laughs> So I plug it in, and I go and plug it into the socket of the kitchen. It just...